And Martindale Williams, happy Thanksgiving, belatedly. What a great weekend. <laughs> Jim Cunningham, it's so nice to be with you here, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. But you had to worry about being a soloist in the Vivaldi Concerto. I don't know. The, our management seems to have these ideas that I love to play during Thanksgiving. I think I've done it in my career here about four times, and it kind of wrecks your celebration. <laughs> you have to be careful. But it will be spectacular for the audience, something you've been doing, giving joy to people who come to hear our concerts of the Pittsburgh Symphony for so long. It's just great. Congratulations. And to have Noah bendix Bagley as your uh, cohort. He's the dream partner, and we are so happy to have him back. Um, it's as if he never left, and I know he's played millions of notes in the interim, but it's so nice. He's so kind and so talented and uh, such a wonderful colleague. And you've played this Vivaldi concerto before? Never. <laughs> Never. Wow. No. I didn't even know that it existed. And uh, I think um, it was suggested, and I looked at it. It sounds good. It sounds wonderful. So it's fun. But there are a bunch. Must be a, there's, a, there's, a, bunch a, there's a lovely uh, double cello concerto, which I've played quite a few times, and of course, a few cello, con many cello concertos, actually. And um, so he, he wrote for so many combinations, and it's great to explore something new. Had you had an opportunity to work with Noah this way before? Uh, we have never played. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I w <laughs> never was able to play Brahms double with him, but uh, we've played trios, piano trios before, and chamber music, but not solo double concertos. I want to ask you a little bit more about Noah, but tell me about the piece, special features of it. The Vivaldi concertos, 500 of them, something like that, lots of concertos, but so many have special features and individual delights. It's kind of like Haydn. It's just unbelievable, the inventiveness. On the surface, they might sound similar, but in fact, there's a, a lot going on. I find that <laughs> the thing that's very difficult for me, and I think I heard Noah express this also, there's so many fast, devilishly fast string crossings to make clear and uh, to uh, illustrate the joy and the energy that he wants us to um, proclaim as we play this. So that's the difficulty. In the middle is a, a beautiful slow movement which is in canon, and so we're imitating one another and having a good time. What do you rely on Maestro for? He's got to do something, yes? He starts us <laughs> and ends us. Yeah. No, of course, we, we do. Uh, but it's pretty much the two of us playing very rhythmically and keeping going. Now, do you think about all these more recent uh, theories regarding original instruments, the way it would have been heard in Vivaldi's day? There's always a thing of what the yeah, modern yeah, orchestra yeah, does yeah, with yeah, Baroque yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, we, we, you know, we had this, we rehearsed, Wednesday morning, that's the first time I saw Noah, uh, you know, like one hour before we were uh, we rehearsed with the orchestra. And we said, okay, uh, are we doing uh, ancient instrument style or modern style or hybrid? We decided to do hybrid, which means we're allowed to vibrate when we feel that it's a good thing, adding expressivity and uh, very clear bow strokes. Um, but you will not think that you're go you've gone to a Baroque Society concert when we play this. It's too fun. Too much fun. <laughs> yeah. But we're trying to be, uh, not over-romanticize it. Yeah. That sounds like a beautiful solution. Yeah, it's a combination you, of com the two compromise ideas. Compromise is always the best. And Vivaldi would have known your cello. He, he'd have recognized your instrument. I saw that. I, I think his dates are, what, what 16, 1685 or something like that he was born. And I'm 1701, my cello was made. So, um, in Rome. So, <laughs> who knows? Close. Who knows? Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Wow. So great. And uh, how would you explain someone, we know Noah bendix Bogley well, but for someone who doesn't know him well, how would you explain what's special about him? He's an amazing guy. An incredible intellect. He's so quick um, and has incredibly creative ideas always and wonderful creative solutions. And he's very, very kind and very... Um, interested in you as a person, which one always appreciates. Yeah. 
And it's nice that we know his family. His mom and dad have come to conscience. Yeah, we just saw his wife just, in the hall. Just saw baby Ari. Well, not baby anymore. He's uh, going to be three and a half, I understand. And I asked his wife, Shen Shen, a wonderful violinist, how is it being an international mama? And she said, oh, it's tough. But, uh, but they're making it work, I'm sure. And how is your family? Your daughter Claire was home for Thanksgiving. Yes. Joe has retired from the yeah. church, but he's That's in a right. Unity Brass group. Yes, he is playing uh, trombone again after 20 years of, of being in youth ministry. Uh, so I hear him practicing late, too late at night down in the basement, long tones. Uh, and my daughter is uh, a medical student uh, doing her rotations in New York and New Jersey right now. So uh, we're thankful that she was at home. What is her dream? I don't know. It's sort of the dream of the day, uh, du jour. I, she originally said pediatric neurology. I don't know. She'll be great. <laughs> She'll be she good. Does, she sure. will be. She no will question. Be. Yeah. Wow. We never take you for granted. I want to know some memories of the very beginning with you in the Pittsburgh Symphony. You were hired by William Steinberg, correct? That is correct. I uh, arrived um, to audition. There were two openings, one in the section and one in the uh, assistant principal, second chair. And so I, I auditioned for and played for the uh, section job, and I heard afterwards, uh, they like you very much. Here's the book, the, the music for the assistant job. Go learn it and come back in an hour. And this is music that you'd study for years before you'd even think of. So I, like a fool, uh, went upstairs and practiced and came back and won the audition. And uh, William Steinberg uh, was, um, that was his last year here in Pittsburgh. And uh, Andre Previn and I arrived the next fall and together. 70, 76. 76. Yes. Wow. Memory of Steinberg. Steinberg. Um, his tears. Um, I really did not play with him a lot. He did come to Curtis in my last year when I was there and conduct, uh, conduct uh, Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme. And I think he came uh, once when I was in the Pittsburgh Symphony. And he loved beautiful music. And he was also a little unclear for a, a, a novice like I was in the orchestra business. Uh, he, he had such a heart, and if you knew the music, you knew exactly what he was doing, but if you were looking for a beat, it wasn't always so clear. But he loved the music. Uh, it beat in his heart. You, you could feel it in his soul. Yeah. I heard his Beethoven Ninth when he left, mm -hmm. and I heard some of his other concerts in that last year or two, mm -hmm. but I never met him, so it's mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. to hear your, mm -hmm. your thoughts about what it was like mm -hmm. to know him personally. Mm -hmm. We gotta go. You have a busy day. You have a concert tonight. <laughs> yes, yes. But we'll we'll get into the Andre Previn uh, memories next time. Okay. <laughs> you know, I saw you what a week ago ago. You were playing Christmas carols with your colleague yes. Chris Wu, and you give more than most. You have worked so hard to keep the standards high, to be playing at the very highest level, and you give more to the well, community. I I feel that the Pittsburgh Symphony has given me so much an opportunity for my career and the people in Pittsburgh I love love them and it's my a gift to me to be able to play bless you dear thank Anne you, Martin, <laughs> thank, thank, you. you. <laughs> thank you Jim thank you so much